Let's talk about some concepts associated with a single cycle time loop. In order to do that, I'll go ahead and start from the beginning here by first creating a, a project from which we can get an FPGA target. And for this example, I'll use the Xilinx Spartan 3E starter board. I'll select my target and then pick a new VI. Now at this point we see that we've got FPGA target specified up here because what I'll be demonstrating will not look the same if you were to just go ahead and create a new VI. For example, if we try it this way, you'll see it says my computer and this is your indication that you're developing a VI uh, as a, a host-based VI as opposed to a FPGA targeted VI. The other way that you'll be able to tell the difference is when you look at your palettes, you'll note that you have the full range of palettes available here. So for example, the strings uh, are not supported at all in the FPGA target. All right, now the idea uh, that's fundamental to the design really of any circuit in LabVIEW FPGA, but uh, j we can just be thinking about combinational circuits here for a moment. Uh, first of all, if we were to create a structure just very simply based on an AND gate, for example, and supposing we stick down some FPGA inputs and outputs, For example, if we wanted to take a signal from the center push button that is on the rotary knob on the Xilinx starter kit board, you can press the button down and that gets us access to this signal right here. And actually, let's go ahead and add one more. Say we wanted to use one of the slide switches as well. All right, so now I've got my two individual switches set up here. Let's go ahead and add a single output as one of the discrete LEDs. And I'll just pick on LED zero for this purpose. So we'll quickly get a circuit constructed here. Let's see if that's actually working. Do a wire cleanup on this one. There we go. Let's go ahead and do it on that one as well. Now, if we were to go ahead and run this as is, could go ahead and do that. What would happen is it would launch the process of converting this VI into a set of VHDL files. It would then build uh, those files through the synthesis process, the place and route and so on, and eventually come up with a bitstream and download that to the FPGA. And what you would observe is that effectively this happens one time, but if, uh, if you were to manipulate these switches on the board, you would not observe any change over here. Because what would have happened is the VI would have been said to run once and then it's done. It's not running any longer. And that, that behavior actually does happen on the FPGA. To make this look like a, a conventional piece of logic that uh, continually is able to process its inputs, we need to embed this inside a while loop structure. Now let me first begin with the conventional while loop. We can go ahead and do that, uh, especially if you know that you, you really don't have much intention of ever really interacting with the circuit from a front panel say you're putting together a design where the FPGA board is supposed to be untethered from the desktop in general. Then we could simply say create a constant and say the loop runs indefinitely and that would certainly suffice. Uh, if you want to, if you know that you're going to be using the front panel, you might say change this to a control. Now if we look at the front panel, You can see that that has been created. 
Actually, we get a, oops, let's not do that quite yet. We get a slightly different result if we instead simply say create control right at the outset. And in this case, we get, let's do a control E to expose the front panel. In this case, we get the more conventional looking stop button showing up. Now this loop, as it turns out, does require a few number of clock cycles to operate. It, it really depends on the kind of things that you're placing inside the loop. But even for a very simple design like this, the loop will take some finite number of, of cycles on the order of about eight cycles or so, simply because that's the way it gets implemented on the FPGA. Now, the simple AND gate that I'm showing here is supposed to look more like a, a pure combinational circuit. So in that case, we can choose replace with the timed loop. And this is all you really need to do. At this point, the structure is operating once every clock cycle. And on the Xilinx board that's operating at a 50 megahertz clock, that means that this is being um, effectively evaluated once every 20 nanoseconds. Now, from what I've done so far, the output will still be registered. So we do not actually have a purely combinational path from the inputs to the outputs. But uh, that 20 na nanosecond delay should probably not be much of a concern for most applications. So to conclude, every combinational circuit that you build should reside inside either a standard while loop or the single cycle time loop. And for that matter, any digital structure that you're creating, uh, combinational or sequential, needs to exist inside one of these loops.